Hey everybody, it's Reed Comics 81 and I'm back with another video. So today's video is going to focus on what's known in our community as stealth buying. And for those of you who aren't familiar with that term, a stealth buy is when you find a comic book either out in the wild or on eBay, it doesn't matter where you find it, and the price for the book is much lower than the book's actual value. So you're able to get that book for an incredible deal, and it usually implies that the person who marked the book um, was unaware that the book was worth more than what they priced it for. For instance, um, you're at an uh, antique mall and you find a comic book but let's say Hulk 181 priced at $10 and you're able to buy that book for $10. That would be an example of a stealth buy. So um, recently Alex the Comic Hoarder made a video um, where he was talking about how he found a bunch of these pulp magazines from the 1920s at an antique mall and he got them for really good prices, like really cheap prices, and they're worth a lot more. And really, really good video. You guys should go check this haul video out. It's amazing. So anyway, um, somebody commented on his video, and they left a really rude comment, um, basically saying that he was taking advantage of this, this seller, the seller's ignorance, and um, that he should stop bragging about finding books like that. <laughs> so anyway, this video is just going to be my perspective on this subject. Um, so first of all, I want to make it real clear that everybody's opinion is their own opinion. So if you feel like um, somebody is unethical for buying a book that's marked very cheap when it's actually worth a lot more. If you feel like that's unethical, then that's your opinion. Um, myself, I don't feel like that's being unethical. I feel like that is doing two things. It's getting a good deal and you're paying an honest price because you're paying for what the book is marked at. And two, you're helping to support somebody who is trying to sell that item. So you're happy, the seller is happy. I don't see a problem with anything like that. Um, being unethical, I feel like, an example of being unethical in a situation like that would be, okay, like an antique mall, the person who is selling the items, they're not there typically. The only time you'll see a person who is selling the items is when they're there, like adding new items or cleaning up their booth or whatever, but typically these people are not there. They, they set up their products and they go home and the antique mall, the people that run the mall, are in charge of the transactions. So an example of being unethical at an antique mall would be um, switching the prices on items so that you can get you know, an expensive book for a cheap price or obviously stealing an item. You know, Something like that would be unethical, but um, paying the asking price, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, so I'm going to delve a little bit deeper into this topic. I've got some examples of some books that I've purchased that were stealth buys, and I'm going to talk about how that transaction happened, and not only um, the transaction, but how if that transaction had not happened, that would actually be detrimental um, to the people who are trying to sell these books. Okay, so the first one I'm going to talk about is a book that I love to show. <laughs> so I'm going to take this opportunity to show this book again. And this is uh, Black Rider number 8 from 1950, the Stan Lee photo cover. Now, I found this book at an antique mall, and I paid $10 for this. The seller had a showcase with a small stack of comics. They were all $10 a piece. I got this for $10. Um, was that unethical to pay the asking price for this book? Um, no. Is this book worth way more than $10? Yes, it is. Um, but um, I paid the price that the seller was asking. I supported this seller. Not only did I support the seller, but by supporting them, I actually support the antique mall, um, which helps them to stay open and to continue selling not only comic books, but all types of items to all types of people that come in there. 
Um, another thing about um, antique malls is um, if, if <laughs> the person who commented on Alex's video um, told him that he should he should have paid full value for the book instead of taking taking advantage of this person and he should have just been happy with owning a piece of history uh, you know even even though he had to pay full price for it well i've shopped at many antique malls over the years and um i've never seen anybody uh go to the counter with an item and request that the person at the cash register um call the seller because you can't just talk to the seller you know like i said they're not there you have to call them and hope that they answer and uh then negotiate prices because so, sometimes antique malls will allow that they will they will call people and um see if they'll take an item for a lower price but it usually has to be a minimum of like a minimum of like a fifty dollar item or something like that but anyway i have never seen anybody um go to the counter at an antique mall and demand to pay more money for an item. I mean, <laughs> it just doesn't happen. I mean, you, you don't, you don't do that. You know, it's just, it's just not how antique malls work. Um, yeah, but anyway, uh, here's another stealth buy. Uh, I bought this book a few years ago at uh, a flea market. This is NYX number three, first Laura Kenny. This is probably in this condition, tie grade, Probably a five six hundred dollar book, and I got this for a dollar seventy five. Um, some might argue that I took advantage of this person's ignorance because this is such a valuable book, and I, I got it for so cheap. But at the same time, I bought this along with a few other books. I had a small stack of books, and I gave the guy. I asked him if twenty dollars would be enough for the small stack of books because he had wanted to sell me the whole box for a hundred. Um, I didn't want the whole box. I just wanted you know, 10, 15 books that he had. He agreed to take $20 for this book and the others. He was extremely happy. I was extremely happy. Um, there's no problem with that. And not only were we both happy, but um, this encourages him to continue coming to the flea market and, and to continue selling items at flea markets. I mean, if, uh, if people weren't there to buy items at the prices that the sellers are asking, then places like flea markets, antique malls, they would go out of business. So yeah, I don't feel bad about paying that for that book. Um, rummage sales. Here's another place where you can find good deals, rummage sales. So I've got Lois Lane 106, um, the I Am Curious black cover. And the story behind this book, I paid I think it came to about $1.75 for this book total. Um, I stopped at a, at a yard sale and they had a whole bunch of old stuff, like old furniture, old appliances and things out in the yard, um, bookcases, uh, dishes, knickknacks, whatever. And um, I asked the guy if he had any comic books and he said, hold on a minute, this is an older gentleman. And um, he sent his wife into the garage and she came back it's actually a barn. They had like this huge old dilapidated barn. Maybe not dilapidated, but it was old um, on their property in their backyard. And she came back with a cardboard box full of old comic books. And um, <clears throat> he agreed to sell them to me for what came to about $1.75 a piece. And all of the items that he had at this sale, he had taken out of this barn. And what they were doing is they were trying to clean out their barn because they needed space to park some cars or whatever. I don't know, but they had a bunch of stuff in there, including these comic books that they did not want. They just wanted to get rid of them. So, you know, I paid him some money. I got a book. I got some books that I was happy with. And he was happy because he was able to clear out more space in his garage now or in his barn. Now, if I hadn't bought this box of comics, if I hadn't asked about comics and then bought these comics, who knows what would have happened to those books. They probably would have ended up out at the curb where somebody would have either came and got them for free or they would have ended up in the back of a garbage truck and they would be destroyed. So just another example of a stealth buy where it benefited me and it benefited the person who was you know, selling the books.
So again, I don't really see a problem with paying money, paying what people are asking for, for their product. I mean, it's, it doesn't make any sense to me. Um, I feel like if somebody is going to p complain about somebody um, paying a, a price for a book and it's the price that the seller wanted, if someone's going to complain about that, then there's a good chance that that person is probably just jealous that they weren't able to get a deal like that. But I'm going to show a couple more. Um, I, this is a book that I showed recently from a convention here in Flint, Michigan. And this is Strange Tales 123, first appearance of the Beatle. Very high grade copy of this. I was super happy to pay $35 for this book. This book is worth far more than $35. This is easily, I'm going to say, a $100 book in this condition. Um, again, um, I consider this a stealth buy. The dealer either didn't know what this was worth or didn't care and was just trying to get rid of product. I don't know. I didn't ask. Price said 35 I was happy to pay it. You know, and again, if, if it's not for deals like this, um, then there is a chance that comic book conventions, conventions could start to go under. I mean, prices are high. There are so many high prices at, at conventions now that... I won't pay them. I look for deals like this, and this is how I support comic book conventions, by, by getting books like this. And if more people started doing that, and if all of the books were were priced at you know maximum retail value, I feel like people are going to stop paying money like that because the prices of books are getting higher and higher. People have less and less money because the prices of gas and groceries and everything else is going up. So if you can't find a deal, then... Um, there's a good chance that you're not going to buy books anymore. So, yeah, just, you know, you, you got to get deals in order to support these places. Last book I'm going to show, San Diego, San Diego Comic-Con Comics number two, First Hellboy. I got this as an LCS. It was in their back issue bin. It was marked at five bucks. It was half off that, so I paid $2.50 for this book. Um, major stealth buy. Um... Did I feel bad about it? Uh, not really, um, and I'll tell you why. I feel like if you're in the comic book business, and, and this is kind of like goes along with this book that I bought. Um, if you're in the comic book business, then you have to do your due, due diligence. You have to know the values of books. You have to stay up on trends in the hobby. Um, you have to know what books are going for in order to price your books accordingly. And if you've got too much inventory that, to, to do that, then you might want to you know, hire some help. Or if you're just being lazy about it and you're just not keeping up on how much books are worth, you're not keeping up on what you actually have in your inventory, uh, you're not keeping up on the books that you have in your back issue bins, if, if, if you don't go through them regularly and if you don't know what you have in those bins and what they're priced at, then that's on you. I mean, you can't expect somebody to take a book like this that's marked five bucks and go up to the counter and say, you know, I really want to buy this book, but I noticed it's marked at five dollars. Um, I don't feel comfortable paying that because this is actually a two hundred dollar book. So can I give you a hundred and fifty for it? Nobody is going to do that. I mean, finding books like this at 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 prices that you know are cheap prices. That's what gets people up in the morning to go out to flea markets. That's what gets people in our hobby excited about going to antique malls or Second and Charles or rummage sales. We're hoping to find books like this. I mean, otherwise, what's even the point? If you're going to go to an antique mall or a rummage sale or Second and Charles and pay full retail value for comic books then you might as well just save your gas and save your time and just get books off of eBay. It's as simple as that. And the last thing I want to address before I close this video, guys, is um, the person who commented on Alex's haul video also accused him of bragging. He said, you need to stop bragging about these books that you're finding. Um, so um, I went and consulted my dictionary because... I started thinking, is he bragging? What what exactly does it mean to brag about something? So, let's see. So I looked up the word brag, and I'm going to read you the definition of brag. So, in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, 
the word brag means to let's see where is it now means uh, to assert boastfully. Okay, so now I need to find the word boast. What does the word boast mean? So a few pages back, I found the word boast, and to boast means, uh, where is it? To boast means to praise oneself. That's the first definition. The second definition is to mention or assert with excessive pride. Okay, um, so excessive pride, when, when a lot of people, actually not a lot, when people show books that they're excited to find, um, usually they show their books with excitement, right? They show their books with happiness. Um, I don't feel like that's bragging or boasting. I feel like that's just being happy about finding the books that you found and being happy to share them with the community and to be happy to um, show people that, yes, there are st still deals out there to find. You, If you do go hunting and you go hunting a lot, eventually you are going to find good deals and this is proof of it. So um, I'm not sure that I know of any people in the YouTube comic book community that show books without a sense of happiness or without a sense of pride. I mean, that kind of like the two go hand in hand, you know, if you're showing books, that means you're happy to show them. I mean, otherwise, what are you supposed to do? Just like get on eBay or get on uh, YouTube and, and show books that you found, you know, with just like a flat affect and just like a robotic voice. I mean, that, <laughs> that, that's not, that's not normal. That would be very, very weird. Um, so yeah, anyway, this, this was just my whole take and my perspective on stealth buys and ninja picks, whatever you want to call them. I think they're good for the community. I think they keep, um, they keep comic book collectors excited about going out on the hunt. And um, if anything, when I see people uh, showing books that they found and they got really good deals on them, I'm happy for that person. I'm, I'm really happy and supportive of that person the way we should be. Because when we show books that we're happy about, we want the rest of the community to be happy for us as well. So, yeah, anyway, that's my video for the day. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll see you all next time. Read Comics 81 signing out. Happy hunting, everybody.